If there's one thing that I could change in the entirety of physics, it would be the name for black holes. I'd argue that no two words have ever caused more misunderstandings and misconceptions than black hole, because they're not even holes at all. So where did this phrase come from? Well, I talk about this and many other misconceptions about black holes in my new book, A Brief History of Black Holes, which is out now today. I'll pop a link in the video description below if you fancy getting a copy. Now, in the late 1960s, when black holes were still theoretical concepts, we hadn't actually observed any out in the universe yet, black holes were known as gravitationally completely collapsed objects, or GCCOs, like in this paper from November 1970 by Stephen Hawking. But by March 1971, Hawking was now using the phrase black holes in his research papers. So where did this phrase come from? Well, although Einstein never considered the idea of a black hole, that's another misconception, we do have his theory of how gravity works, general relativity, to thank for putting the idea of a hole into people's minds. General relativity describes the effects of gravity as massive objects curving space. You can think of this in two dimensions, like the surface of a trampoline or a stretched bedsheet with a football in the middle. Space curves around something heavy and everything else travels on that curved space to give us the orbits of stars and planets, etc. The more massive the object, the more space curves. So if you have an incredibly heavy object that's also incredibly dense and concentrated, then you end up with extreme curvature, kind of like the steep sides of a well, making people think of holes. But a black hole isn't a hole in space. In fact, if anything, it's the complete opposite. It's a literal mountain of matter crushed into such a small space that it is so dense that the escape velocity, the speed you would need to travel at to overcome the pull of gravity from the black hole, is greater than the speed of light, which is the fastest speed there is at around about 300,000 kilometers a second. I go into why that's the fastest speed there is and why nothing can travel faster than light in the book, but I've also covered it in a video on this channel before as well, which I'll link in the video description down below if you want to check that out. If anything, I think the name Dark Star would be a better name for black holes. It's definitely a better description anyway. And it was first used back in 1783 by the first person to ever consider the idea of a black hole, John Mitchell, who was a clergyman by day and astronomer by night. After all, a dying star, when it runs out of fuel and collapses in on itself in a supernova, is the only process that we know can make a black hole. They start life as stars and then all of the stuff in them gets squished down under gravity until they become these prisons for light, dark stars. So if dark star was first used as a term to describe black holes and then we had gravitationally completely collapsed objects, where did the phrase black hole come from? Well, we have the physicist Robert Dickey to thank for this. He was giving a presentation at a conference in Dallas, Texas in 1961 on his research into gravitationally completely collapsed objects. And he repeatedly used an analogy to the black hole of Calcutta to describe them. And trigger warning, this is rather a harrowing tale from history. The black hole of Calcutta was a very small prison cell in the dungeon of Fort William in Calcutta in India that was only 4.3 by 5.5 meters wide, about the size of three double beds put together. When the fort fell in 1756, historians estimate that 64 British soldiers were all imprisoned in this tiny cramped space and that only 21 of them survived the night. There's a memorial in Calcutta today erected in 1901 to those who perished in the Black Hole Prison of Old Fort William. Many who see this memorial or who have heard of the Black Hole of Calcutta assume that it got its name from the astronomical object. 
but it's actually the other way around. Robert Dickey rather morbidly stole this description of the prison to describe the gravitational crush of matter down into a black hole. Now the phrase then spread from that conference and the first time it was used in print was in 1964 in an article written by science journalist Anne Ewing called Black Holes in Space. And then slowly the term made its way around, not just the public, but also the scientific community as well. The physicist John Wheeler is often credited with popularizing it around the scientific community because apparently he really enjoyed its brevity and its advertising value, much to my later annoyance. So while I'm glad that the acronym GCCOs didn't catch on, which is the typical thing that's done in modern day astronomy, I just wish that any other phrase, you know, like dark stars had been picked to describe black holes by the physicists of the 60s. Because here's another popular misconception about black holes. They're not black at all. In fact, they're some of the brightest objects in the entire universe. But if you want to know more about that, you're gonna have to read chapter seven. <laughs> Just checking the microphone levels are actually going up and down. Yes, la, woohoo, so, a needle pulling thread, la, needle pulling thread, what am I going to say? I can't get that high, let's drop an octave. If there's one thing that I could change in the entirety of physics, it there's a motorbike outside. It's so loud. If there's one thing I could change about this entire neighborhood, it would be to take that person's motorbike away. No, 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 super massive dark star. See, it still fits. It could work. It could work. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a secret that my favorite part of this entire book is the footnotes. I think my publisher said they had not never published a book with so many footnotes before. I'm trying to find where like the last one is. I think there is uh, 113 footnotes in this book. It's basically like snark comments. <laughs> it's just like my internal monologue of like things I think as I'm writing about it. I love them. 